Just to finish off with this topic, we're going to look at Locker's problems, or Locker's problems, whatever it's called, which is also what we started with, you may remember. Basically, a Locker's problem. Um, we're finding the Locker's of, of a point, remember. We're trying to find a relationship between the X and the Y. Now, in parametrics, the idea basically is get rid of that parameter. Get, so the P's and the Q's are usually what we see in our parabola one. So we're always finding the locus of a point. So it may be the question is asked you somewhere to find the coordinates of a point. Might be point of intersection of two tangents. Might be a midpoint of, of two other points. Who knows? But it'll always be find the locus of a particular point. Now, so the first step is always going to be find the coordinates of the point. Now once you've got that, that's where we're trying to get rid of the parameters. We're looking at the x value and the y value and saying, how can we link these two things together? How can I come up with an equation that this point will always be on? Now, I reckon I can narrow it down to one of three cases. The easiest case, so type 1, is when you look at the x or the y value and there's not a parameter in it anyway. Let's see you've got the answer straight away. So say, for instance, you, you did it and you found the x value was p plus q, and the y value is minus 3. There's my locus. y is minus 3. See, in the y value, there is no mention of p and q. So it doesn't matter what p or q is, the y value will always be minus 3. So there's my locus. y is minus 3. Now, sometimes there might be some restrictions on it. Um, for instance, you might come up with, oh, I don't know, what y equals let's say 2, and, uh, and this was representing a point of intersection of, say, two tangents. Well, it would be impossible for the tangents to meet inside the parabola, for instance. So it might not be the whole line. It might just be a piece of it. So sometimes we have to have a look at it in context with the problem to see whether the, the whole line is possible. But otherwise, that's probably the, the simplest type that we've got there. They've already given us the answer, basically. So we keep our fingers crossed. And they give us that one. We go, yes. All right. The second type is what I call an obvious relationship. It usually means there's only one parameter. And so that's the one where we can make the parameter the subject in either the x or the y value, and then just substitute it into the other one, and it gets rid of the p or the q or whatever it happens to be. So we might get something like this. In this case, the parameter is t. We've come down, we've found the coordinates, 6t, t squared plus 1. There's only one parameter. So I can say, all right, well, I know that x is 6t, so t would be x divided by 6. And then the y value is t squared plus 1, so I can substitute in x on 6 for t, and I get y equals x squared on 36 plus 1. There's an equation. It has no mention of t in it anymore. That's my locus. The point will always lie on, well, in this case, another parabola there. Then there's the third type. Where it's not immediately obvious the relationship. There might be something else that you've done in the question. Um, I guess the most typical one of this is the focal chord type question, where you've proved PQ is negative 1, and you need to use that other relationship to help you find the answer. So we came up with something like this, p squared plus q squared, and then the y value is p plus q. But maybe in another part of the question we prove pq is equal to 3. If I didn't have that extra piece of information, it would be very hard to eliminate the parameter. Temptation to say p squared plus q squared is p plus q all squared, it's not quite the same. But let's have a look at it. X is p squared plus q squared, which we know is p plus q all squared minus 2pq. And therefore I get x is, well the y was p plus q, but I still had this pq. And that's where I used the other relationship that I proved in the problem. And that pq equals 3. Sub that in and I've got x equals y squared minus 6. So the third type, say, is not an immediate obvious relationship. You might have to use some other relationship that you've probably previously proven in the problem. Let's have a look at some HSC ones. So 2005 paper. So here's the question. 
Typical sort of parabola question. We've got the points, there they are, 2AP, AP squared, 2AQ, AQ squared, on our standard parabola. Um, they told us the equation of the normal at P and Q, so we didn't have to work that one out. They've given us that information. And then the first part of the question said, oh, show that the normals intersect at this point. So you had to go and find the point of intersection. Now, I'm not going to worry about that right now because I just want to use this as an example of a Locus question. But you do it, yeah, solve them simultaneously, you come up with that particular expression. The second part of the question then said, um, the equation of the chord is y equals, and there's our standard equation, and then we're told it passes through the focus. So there's that extra relationship we're going to prove in the question. Show that PQ equals negative 1. And remember with a focal chord question, if I've already got the equation of the chord, the quick way of doing that, substitute in the point naught A, and we'll get PQ is negative 1. All right, this is the bit I want to look at. The third part of the question then said, all right, let's go find the locus of R if PQ is a focal chord. So if it does pass through naught A. They told us the X value was minus APQ, P plus Q. That's where we found out back in, I think it was part two. So X is equal to A, P plus Q. I, I know P plus Q then is X over A. Okay. Let's have a look at the y value. Notice, by the way, I used the pq equals negative 1 idea there. So that's why the pq has disappeared. It changed from minus pq to positive 1 in the next line. Now the y value, we're told, is p squared plus pq plus q squared plus 2, all of that times, times a. But I now know p plus q is x on a, and I also know pq is negative 1. So let me rewrite that. Well, p squared plus q squared, again, I can use the idea that and this seems to crop up a lot in these questions using the idea. It's the same idea you might recall from um, sum and product of roots. Remember that, that idea that uh, the sum of the roots squared was equal to the sum of the roots one at a time, all squared minus. Same, basically, it's the same idea. We're saying p squared plus q squared will be p plus q all squared minus 2pq, but then we've got another plus pq in there, so we end up with minus pq. We know p plus q is x on a. We've also worked out in a previous part, pq is negative 1. So we can substitute that all in, and I might just tidy it up a little bit. There we go. Y is x squared on a plus 3a. Two thousand and four paper. Once again, standard points: two AP, AP squared, two AQ, AQ squared. On our x squared equals four AY. This time, uh, it's the tangents we're talking about, and they gave us the equation of the tangent y equals tx minus at squared would be the standard one. Show that the tangents intersect. So the first part of this question was solving the two tangents simultaneously, and you may recall we get a P plus Q, APQ. Okay, so there's the point. Part two. As P varies, so P is moving on the parabola, Q is chosen such that POQ is a right angle. And O is the origin. Find the locus of R. Okay. Well, again, there's not an immediate obvious relationship. This one's P plus Q. This is PQ. So we're going to have to come up with another relationship and the information they've given me is that angle POQ is always a right angle. So if that's true, I know the slope of OP times the slope of OQ is negative 1. So subbing into that, uh, so slope OP, AP squared on 2AP, slope OQ, AQ squared on 2AQ, that all tidies up. And eventually, there we are, in this case PQ is negative 4. But again, it's going to be the same idea. I now know PQ is negative 4. Ah, well, if PQ is always negative 4, I now have one of those very simple questions. I don't need to find a relationship between Y and X, because have a look at the Y value. The Y value is APQ. But if PQ is always negative 4 for this question, I've got rid of my parameter straight away. So I'm not going to worry about the X value. Y is APQ. 
So therefore, y is minus 4a. There are no p's and q's. There's my locus. y is minus 4a. Uh, in this case, it could be the whole line, because uh, we look at what r represents. Point of intersection of two tangents. But y equals minus 4a would always be outside the parabola. So that's fine. It could be the, the, the whole line. So 9j, the odds up to 